Good morning, Louise. Morning, Rob. And good morning, everyone who are tuning into this episode of God is Supernatural. Our verses you probably know is 1 Corinthians 2 4. My message, my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, because more words is not what is required in this world, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. That's what we need. We need an an actual encounter with the living God. That's what brings people to faith, not simply wise, wonderful, intelligent words that uh, are convincing today. And then tomorrow, somebody else has a different argument and suddenly we're in doubt about everything. We need a, a genuine encounter. So uh, we often give uh, testimonies from all our ministry events, but it's been a while since we gave a testimony from Kingdom First. So Kingdom First, um is our discipleship program where we train coach mentor people into a living experience with the holy spirit where they learn to heal the sick cast out demons break strongholds and prophesy and uh, that's kind of where i met you louise wasn't it it is yeah transformed my life doing the course definitely engaging with god and the supernatural we come out of it as new men and women yeah sometimes yeah. scary because you're pushed out your comfort zone but um you know god uses you in powerful ways that you never imagined absolutely and you came into that like a like a newbie really and then you <laughs> And now, the last couple of weeks, you've actually been training people on prophecy tasters and healing taster sessions, haven't you? Yeah, and if you told me that a few years ago, I'd have said no way. <laughs> right. and, and do you know what? It takes a takes a while for people to understand that uh, we can be trained to minister in the supernatural, like like we could be trained, I don't know, to play the guitar or swim a couple of lengths in the pool and then we can train other people to do that for some yeah. reason for some reason it's uh you can't train or disciple people into that because uh it's inherently unknowable and um and uh, what's the word random so how do you train people in something that's random but as you know it's not random is it definitely not and it's all about having that courage and boldness to step out into you, what you know God is calling you into. And when you're surrounded by other people doing that, you know, you, it, you do become bolder because God gives you that courage, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And because we know him and his resurrection power, we can be confident that our God is going to meet the needs that uh, that are presented before us. So, so we're going through a uh, training of a new set of students. And uh, last week we were looking at uh, the unbelief stronghold. And then we came into our, our time of ministry and you were leading one group, I was leading another group. So we just got three testimonies from uh, three, of, three of the people that uh, were prayed for. And I'll, I'll share a couple of them, but then you're sharing one of, you'll, you'll share the third one. Um, yeah. And so in my group, um, uh, this is testing about a couple of the ladies. So for one, um, we, we, we begin by inviting the Holy Spirit really to surface some of the deep things, deep needs that need to be addressed. And what she had shared before we prayed was, um, yeah, fairly minor, it seemed, and it's always occurred to me, and this is a, a, a learning point, that often when people are sharing something and it feels quite surface, um, usually it is quite surface, and that actually the way to approach that is not to try and dig and probe, because if they can't really recall anything that is deeper, then they can't recall it. So we, need, we really need to allow the Holy Spirit to do that deeper work. So um, she was wanting to be prayed for. So we invited the Holy Spirit to come and to surface what the Holy Spirit felt needed to be addressed. And actually something really quite deep did come out and it was a period of her, her life when, when 
she was through no fault of her own powerless and spent some years really in that situation of being powerless and all and really she just had to suck it up and see yeah just suck it up couldn't do anything else about it and as a result of that uh she couldn't really cope with well, she she had coping mechanisms to help her through situations where she was presently felt powerless and and it was the coping mechanisms that came up for her and um we were able to encourage her just to renounce partnering with the belief that had emerged that god couldn't help her or god mm -hmm. wouldn't help her and she prayed into it in her own words and it was just very deep powerful repentance renouncing and as she did that uh this thing this which we know as a spirit just lifted off her chest she physically felt this spirit lifting off her chest and she felt lighter like a weight had gone and and said it was amazing it was amazing and it was and you could see the change in her through that and then the other lady um again you know um mentioned a couple of things and uh, um they didn't necessarily seem to carry much a weight of emotion uh for her she was able to say to say them to say those things without emotion and again we just said look we'll invite the holy spirit to minister and to surface what needs to be surfaced so that a deep work can occur we invited the holy spirit onto her and the holy spirit all came onto her in, in such a deep powerful way i felt like this is almost going into a a trance because um it looked like she you know sometimes it looks like people have, have departed it's, it's very strange you've got, you've got to experience you've got to see it to to understand it but sometimes it looks like people have departed or their spirit has departed and gone elsewhere and other times it just looks like they've gone really really deep um mm. and for her she looked like she has gone really really deep so i was i was somewhat hesitant about asking her what the holy spirit was doing or what he was surfacing um mm. and so we just allowed it to to continue and then and she came out of it and actually for her she was raised in a church where women were not allowed to speak and where there was a sense that women were second class citizens and and so that was still a, a real hindrance for her so we encouraged her to just renounce partnering with that in any way and um and anyway partnering with that with that lie and to pray as the holy spirit led her along those lines and as we as she did that as she did that work um we could see something was going on and when we asked her she said I, i've got i'm experiencing in my hands two really heavy lumps of lead i feel that's where i've got two heavy lumps of lead in my hands and i can't raise my hands so even though she was her eyes were open louise and she yeah. was talking to us nevertheless she had this sensation of lumps of lead in her hands and she couldn't raise her hands have you come across that yeah yeah why well, we experienced something similar on the streets last night when we were we were praying for for a homeless lady but it's like you say it's not just in their mind's eye they 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 are physically feeling that aren't they yeah yeah they are i mean they are living in it's like they were, they are in two dimensions Mm. Uh, we can see them <laughs> and they are also experiencing something from god's world as well yeah. so she had that she was experiencing that so and one of the ladies who was praying uh and i wasn't sure is that a gift is that something god's giving or is this a burden um yeah. anyway god gave wisdom to one of the other ladies in our prayer team and she prayed those weights off her and and suddenly um the lady we were praying for her hands were up we could see her hands were visibly up like they just kind of sprung up uh yeah. released from the from the weights and and there had just been a real internal release that had occurred for her as well amazing we praise god for 
And I saw her on the Saturday afterwards, and I'm not sure if it was already planned or not prior to that that meeting on the the Wednesday night. But I know that she is playing a big part in leading a healing service this coming yeah. Sunday. So she's really you know, not partnering with those lies anymore and stepping into the supernatural in her church. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Um, yeah, and anyway, the third testimony is what was in your group? Yeah, so um, in, in our group, we were praying with a guy um, who felt like that the Holy Spirit had raised, that he kept going back to the past you know not he had a fear of what what was going to happen in the future and kept trying to bring restoration to stuff that that had happened in his past yeah um and so he he shared that we asked the holy spirit to come and it was it was evident the holy spirit was on him he looked peaceful and he looked calm but i just felt like the holy spirit was asking me to ask him if he was willing to cut soul ties with somebody from his past um, that that he kept seeking that restoration with, and I was quite nervous about doing that because I, you know, I knew this. It, it was a big, um, big ask. Uh, yeah, massive ask. So I, I nervously asked him, and he agreed that that we could cut soul ties with this person. So the team prayed, uh, you know, we, we severed those soul ties and uh, just asked for, for freedom from that and just blessing and just replacing all of those lies about not God, but that God is not going like, to look after him in the future with the truth that he's his good, good father. Um, and as we did that, he became quite emotional on the night. Um, yeah. And he so, you, so you severed the, the soul ties through yeah. prayer. He became emotional at that point. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is always this kind of cause and effect, isn't it? Your yeah. prayer having powerful impact. Sign of release as well, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, he, he went away happy. Um, but during the week, he, he sent me a message uh, just saying... Um, my heart has been healed and God has cut ties that should no longer be in place. Since Wednesday, I've been sleeping better and my brain is so much more organised. Um, I also feel tons lighter. So, oh, yeah. yeah, praise God. Yeah, we yeah we praise him indeed. That is, that is real freedom, freedom for the captives, sight yeah. for the blind. So, guys, we want to encourage you in your own walk. Um, you know, if you're needing training, come along. Why don't why not come along? Sign up. Sign up with Kingdom First. We've got another Kingdom First coming up in March, and uh, yeah, we'd love to have you on it. But in the meantime, keep doing the good work. God bless you. See you next week. <laughs>